What's up guys, Mike Builds. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this EcoWorthy single axis solar tracking system. This is made by EcoWorthy, the same people that also make batteries. I didn't even know they made solar trackers, but here we are testing this single axis one. They also make a dual axis one. This particular tracker runs on 12 volts. It does not charge the battery as you're using it, so you will need to provide your own power supply. I'm currently just using a EcoWorthy 12 volt, 280 amp hour battery connected directly to the solar tracking controller. And the good thing about this battery being so large is I won't have to charge this for easily a few days. This thing does not use much power. All it does is power this actuator and every 10 minutes it makes the adjustment. It'll be interesting to see how this holds up in the weather. Everything is waterproof. The electronics are waterproof. The controller, it's all sealed up and all the connections have O-rings on the connectors. You will not get any water in the electronics. The only thing you really have to waterproof yourself is the power supply going to your tracking controller. So the good thing about trackers versus just a stationary solar panel mount, for you guys who don't know, is the tracker will actually follow the sun as it kind of goes through the sky. And what that allows you to do is allows you to get more output out of your solar panels because a solar panel gives you the most output when the sun is directly overhead of the panel, if that makes sense. This one's a single axis, so you have one actuator here. And then the second axis you have to set manually. You set this depending on the time of year and where you're at. That way it gets the best angle for where the sun's at in the sky for the season. But if you have the dual axis one that they also sell, it has another actuator on that axis. It can automatically track on that axis as well. Now the tracker itself is made out of what seems like pretty good quality steel tubing that's also very well painted. So the paint will protect it from the weather. You're not gonna get any rust or any of that. All the bolts and hardware are stainless steel. You're supposed to bolt this into concrete, but what I did is I bolted it to this giant half inch steel plate and then I put some feet, welded some feet on it. That way I can actually move this around my yard. As far as components of the system, you have this tracking controller here, and this is what actually controls the actuator. This is the actual actuator. This actually performs all the movements and it tilts like this as the sun moves across the sky. And the controller gets data from this little sun sensor here. And the sun sensor basically tells the controller where exactly the sun's at and the controller will make the adjustments. This runs on 12 volts. You will have to provide your own external power supply, but it should be fairly easy to do because this does not use very much power. And my plan in the future is to add a small solar charge controller and a small solar panel, as well as a little bit smaller battery. And that will power all this easily, no problem. Okay, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but right here on this little screen, it shows you how much battery you have. It says it's working. And then it also says tracking countdown, three minutes. And if you hold the set button, you can actually go in here and change the interval. So the lowest you can go is 10 minutes and you can go all the way up to 60 minutes, which means every 10 minutes or whatever you set it to, it's gonna reference the sun load sensor and it's gonna make a movement on the panel. So that's cool to see. That's how that works. Hold it back to get back to the main menu. And then this button here says flat. So if you wanna lay the solar panels flat, like if you're gonna do any sort of maintenance or maybe there's a lot of wind and this thing's moving around a lot, if you hold this, it'll actually set the whole panels to basically flat now. The assembly of this was very easy and straightforward. You don't need any crazy tools to do it. The instructions were easy to read. As far as solar panels, I'm running six Harbor Freight 100 watt panels. And they fit on here really nice. I did have to put a brace right here because the panels kind of flop because they don't necessarily reach across the span, if that makes sense. Before I had these panels directly mounted onto the ground. And when I say mounted, I mean literally thrown on the ground. You can fit a wide variety of different panels on here. It shows you in the manual, the dimensions. So make sure you measure your panels to see which ones will fit. And then also on the website and in the manual, they have a recommended size you can get. And here is the dimensions for you guys who are wondering what you can actually fit on the tracker itself. It also shows if you want to use some maybe bigger panels or some even bigger panels. Six Harbor Freight panels work perfect and all the panels are wired in series. So we're gonna go over to the charge controller. I'm gonna show you guys how much power we're making. See, they're all wired to these set of connectors right here and then it goes down and it goes into the house. You were making almost 500 watts. So 500 watts out of six panels is actually really good. You will very rarely get 100% output of your panel. And the solar tracker is gonna be used mainly to charge my 12 volt power system. So this battery on this cart, as well as all these small ones right here are all gonna be charged by the solar tracker. So that's gonna be its permanent use for my setup specifically. If you compare it to solar pergola, we did a whole video on this. The problem with this thing is because it's mounted completely flat, when the sun is real low in the sky, like it's gonna be over here during the winter, these aren't gonna produce as much power. Whereas compared to the tracker, this thing's always gonna be moving, always trying to be putting your panels at the optimum angle. It's doing a really good job of it right now. I am impressed with the build quality. So good job, Eco Worthy, very happy with it. In order to actually test the effectiveness of the tracker, I'm gonna run the tracker on for an entire day. As you can see, the weather is perfectly clear. We're gonna run it for a full day with it on, tracking the sun, and we're gonna see how many watt hours we produce on the charge controller. And then the next day, I'm actually gonna flatten the solar panels out. 
we're gonna turn off the tracking mechanism, and then we're gonna see how many watt hours we make on that day, and we'll be able to compare the results. EcoWorthy says you can get up to 30% more yield out of your panels using tracking, so that's a pretty significant amount, and that'd be really awesome to see. But that's pretty much it, guys. Not much more to see on the tracker itself. I'm gonna give you guys a good little walk around. At the end of this video, after we do all the testing, I'm gonna show you guys how I built it. So that all the building of this is gonna be at the end. Normally I would put it at the beginning, but I think you guys are gonna be more interested in how this thing works and kind of my overall initial impression of the solar tracker. But that's it, we're gonna to get to testing this thing. I am gonna put the link to this in the description if you guys wanna go check it out for yourself, maybe read up on the specs or see if that's something you'd be interested in trying out for yourself. Okay guys, so this is the grand total for day one. And this is the tracker not on at all, which means the solar panels were sitting at a flat angle. Actually, they're angled like this, but the tracker did not move at all. So I did go ahead and power up the tracker. So this number, whatever it is tomorrow or in the next clip for you guys, that's going to be how much we've gained from using the tracker to actually move the solar panel. So that's our baseline 2.02 .02 kilowatt hours, which is pretty dang good. Okay guys, it's the next day. I've had the solar tracker running all day. It's just now starting to get a little bit of shading from the house next door. So if this was completely alone by itself in like a field or something, we would actually get even more output than what we're already gonna get. And as you can see, the weather is exactly the same as the previous test where we had the tracker completely turned off. So now we're gonna go over to the charge controller and see how much power we've made. And just remember, the when we checked it last time, that was when it was dark. So this thing is still making power, but let's just go see what it's made already and see if the tracking has made any sort of difference. Here are the results from us with the tracker on. The previous one was from the tracker being off. And as you can see, we produced 3.3 kilowatt hours versus two kilowatt hours. So we've easily generated about a 1.3 kilowatt hours more than with the tracker completely off. So that's pretty significant gain. Some people were saying the trackers don't really add much more, but that's, more than a 30% gain, I'm really impressed. So there you have it guys, there's the proof it's in the pudding. This thing actually did gain us some kilowatt hours. I've watched a couple of videos and some people were saying these really aren't worth it. But even in my scenario where it's already getting partial shade, it still produced more power than if they were just gonna be completely flat. So I'm gonna call this test a success, very happy with that. Let me know what you guys think. Well, that's it for the testing guys. The rest of this video is gonna be the build of the tracker so if that's something you want to see stick around all right guys we're gonna go ahead and unbox the solar tracker I already got the main piece out right here so we're gonna lay everything out on the deck just to kind of see what we're working with so you guys already saw this is like our main mass we got some of this c channel looking stuff this is the actual tracking module itself and this is what that looks like so this is going to control the linear actuator based on the sun sensor to determine the position of the solar panel tracking so it's pretty interesting looks like all the connections are watertight and this is probably the power cable. So we're gonna put all this to the socket. Actually, I'm gonna keep this on the box. This is the linear actuator. So this is what's gonna do all the moving of the tracker itself to track the sun. And then there's some hardware in that little baggie. All right, I'm gonna get all this out of the box and lay it all out, but I think that's it. And we have two more boxes of hardware. So I'm gonna get all this laid out now. Show you guys what it all looks like all righty guys so here's everything you get like i said before so we got the tracker itself with the motor it even comes with a compass that way you can orientate it right some more hardware for the panels i'm assuming and all the bolts but yeah this is all the parts we get so i'm gonna start by building something to put the base on So this north face right here needs to actually face that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the whole unit 90 degrees to get everything lined up. And pretty much just like that. So that's what we're left with. And this is going to be your like time of year adjustment. And then the actual track is gonna go this way. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this thing together.
All right, here's how we're looking so far, pretty good. It's actually coming together real easy. Panel mounts on, and then I think from there we're gonna put the actuator on and the, all the adjustments gonna get put on. And then I do have to go back and tighten all the bolts. All right, I think I'm done for just tonight because it is getting kind of dark and the GoPro doesn't do really good in low light situations. So that's kind of what we're looking at so far. I'd still like to maybe use these Harbor Freight solar panels, but so far the assembly has been very easy. I went ahead and got the actuator mounted and put on with just these little L brackets that go here with a little pin and cotter pin to hold them in place. I was in the middle of putting this on. This is going to go right here and this is going to let you set the basically the tilt of the tracker. But you guys can see the basic structure of the tracker kind of come together. And then, like I said, this is how you set your... What up, Midnight? What you doing, Midnight? This is basically how you set the angles for the time of year. So during the summer, this would be more flat. And then during the winter, it would be more at a slant like that. And the tracker, you can see it's tilted fully this way. So that's about the max angle it's going to put the panels at. So far, I'm really impressed with this thing, how easy it is to build. And it's relatively simple. The base, I still have to add more material to strengthen it. Because as you can see, this direction, it's kind of wobbly. This direction, I think it's going to be fine. But when you have solar panels on there, it's going to act like a, a big sail. So we don't want that. But it is interesting I'm doing it like this because I haven't seen anyone else do that. So if this is something you're interested in doing, you guys can see how it works out for me and judge for yourself. I just want to have the ability to be able to move it. You know, that's kind of the main reason. But anyways, it's coming together. I got a few more odds and ends to put on it. Then we're going to mount the solar panels. And then all we got to do is wire it, hook it up to 12 volts and see if it works. Get it fly catchers. Oh. All right, we got that all mounted up too easy. Also a side note, I forgot to put these on, but I didn't realize that these went here. So I'm gonna end up putting these on off camera, but I just thought I'd mention that because I did put these together wrong. All right, there's our sensor mounted. Now all I have to do is kick our wire. and I'm gonna route it nice and neatly with some zip ties all the way to the controller. Give this one 12 volts, this one plugs into the actuator and the controller should turn on and then we can play with all the settings and stuff. Also, I added some metal, as you can see, to the base. And I'm going to put another piece on that side and that's going to get welded on there to make the base nice and solid. It seems good so far, but I definitely don't trust it. If there's any amount of wind, it'll definitely blow this thing over. So keep that in mind. If you're going to do it like me, make sure you build a good base or just put it in concrete. Kind of like you're supposed to. But anyways, let's see if we can't get the scene at level. Okay. Oh wow, there it went. Okay. I'll start by putting a panel right here. All right guys, so I ended up switching to the Harbor Freight 100 watt panels just because that was the original idea. And I didn't know if they were gonna fit on here, but they actually fit quite well. I did have to kind of connect the panels right here because the panels can only fit kind of right, sitting right in the middle and it was kind of twisting this a little bit. So I put a brace on this side and then I also put one on the one way on the end. Don't mind the wiring. I'm gonna go back and kind of tidy all this up, but this is just really to test it. Here's my outputs. I do have to make an extension harness to reach my 12 volt charge controller. This is kind of the final product. There's a little bit more tidying up to do, but it looks freaking amazing. It's definitely gonna need a little bit more, I mean, it feels pretty sturdy, but I'm gonna reinforce the bottom just a little bit more, add some bricks, add some weight. And other than that, this thing's good to go. Well guys, I think I'm gonna end the video here. If you made it all the way to this point, you guys are the real MVPs. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about the Eco-Worthy Tracker. If you're using one, comment below and let me know how it's going. And what are y'all's thoughts on it? Are you going to use a tracker for your next setup or is it just a gimmick? I'll see you on the next one.